The objective uh, includes shape and arrangements of prokaryotes. Prokaryotes, they include bacteria and archaea. Uh, these are the two major groups. And although both um, bacteria and archaea look similar, uh, their chemical composition is different. And majority of prokaryotes uh, are bacteria. So if we look and try to classify uh, prokaryotes, especially bacteria, they come in three shapes. As you can see here, these morphologically, shape-wise, these cells look round or spherical. And anything that is spherical or any cell that is spherical is called a coccus. Uh, plural is cocci. Similarly, if the shape of the bacterium is like a rod, it is called a bacillus. Bacillus is singular, bacilli are plural. So B A C I L L I, bacilli are plural. Third shape that we see in bacteria is a is what we call spiral. And this spiral shape bacteria come in three subgroups. If the spiral bend is slight, it is called a vibrio. And if there are more turns than one, then, and, and if the bacteria is kind of rigid, strong, not flexible. It is called a spirillum. And if it is flexible and has many turns or bends, it is called spirochete. And these bacteria, all of these, um, they move by axial filaments. These spiral um, bacteria, they have a special filament, what we call uh, axial filament. And they move by that, by beating that uh, structure. This is um, the slide that shows Vibrio, which is a slightly curved rod. And as you can see, um, this is a diagrammatic representation. Uh, this is an electronic, uh, uh, electron micrograph. And this is a, a stained um, image under the light microscope. So these these uh, cells are quite big compared with other bacteria. And they, Vibrio, Vibrio cholera is a very common uh, disease in humans cause cholera. They say, Haza hum kehte so This is an example of a, a spiral, subgroup uh, spiralum. As I mentioned earlier, that this has a helical uh, symmetry. That means it has bends in it. And the overall structurally, the bacterium is rigid. This is an example of a species that causes uh, rat bite fever, spiralum minus. And these spirochetes and spirals, uh, they are quite big bacteria, actually. The third uh, player in the spiral group is R spirochetes. These are again helical, that means that they have bends in the uh, structure. But Overall, the bacterium is flexible. As I mentioned earlier, that all these, um, they have either for the mobility or for the movement, they have a flagella. But these spirochetes especially, uh, they have evolved special structures. It's a modification of the flagella, and bacteria move by it. And that uh, is called an axial filament. Instead of flagella, we call it axial filament. We'll study the... Uh, the structure in detail uh, in a short while. Uh, spirochetes are um, bacteria that causes many diseases in humans and animals. Just to give you some examples, um, there's a leptospirus species in, in animals and humans. It causes fever. And rats are very common um, agents for spreading this disease to humans and even to animals. 
So be very careful. If the rats are around your house, you have to take care of them. Otherwise, they'll make you sick. Another disease uh, by the spirochete is, the name of the, the organism is Brillia burgdorferi. It causes Lyme disease in humans. And another one is Treponema pallidum. It's called syphilis, the sexually transmitted disease. And this is uh, the kind of uh, uh, signs and uh, ulcers causes on the body. These spirochetes, as I mentioned, they're helical, but they're flexible, and they move by axial filament. They're also huge cells, like they measure five, uh, from uh, anywhere from five uh, micrometer to 250 micrometer in length, and they could be wider, uh, as, as wide as 0.6 micrometer. And uh, this is a cross-section of uh, the body of a spirochete that shows these small, small, teeny structures, what we call them endoflagella. And when this endoflagella rotates, these spirochetes move from one place to the other. Now, these cells, as they have many shapes, but there is another uh, spin into uh, this morphology that these cells are arranged, could be arranged differently. And this arrangement of these cells is used for identification of these organisms as well. So if you look at cocci, the first group that are spherical in nature, in morphology, if there is a, this is a, this here is a plane of division. If there's one plane of division, the cells will either divide into, of course, it would divide into two, but then if they, these two cells stay together, we call them diplococci. That means diplo mean two and cocci is um, spherical cell. And if after the divisions they remain attached one after the other, uh, they form a chain, and a chain is called strep. So streptococci means that these are cocci, these are spherical organisms, but they're arranged in long chains. Now, these spherical um, bacteria, if they have multiple, they divide in multiple planes, they can, this multiple plane, uh, two planes here, it can give rise to four cells. And four cells, a combination of four cells is called tetrarch. If there are three planes of division, like we see here, um, it would result into eight cells. And eight cell aggregation is called sarcinai or sarcinai. Uh, if the planes of divisions are many, then we end up in a bunch of cells, and a bunch of cells is called staphylococci. These are uh, scanned electron micrographs of uh, these spherical uh, shaped bacteria. Similarly, bacilli could also be arranged in various forms. This is a single bacillus here. After the division, if the two cells, two rod shaped cells, stay together, we call them diplobacilli. And if they remain attached one after the other, uh, after the cell division, we call them streptobacilli. As I mentioned earlier, strept, strep mean chain. Sometimes we see a little variation in these bacilli that the cell is, um, it resembles like there are two or three cocci together, and overall it looks like a, a rod also. So we have uh, used a special name, or we use a special name for such uh, morphological structure, and that is called coxobacillus. And if there are more of these, would, we would call them coxobacilli. Uh, spirochetes, or spirals, on the other side, uh, they, after the cell division, they remain single. Archaea, much like bacteria, they also come in three uh, shapes. They could be star-shaped, like, like here, and they could be rectangular as well, and even triangular. Then another thing that we see very commonly in uh, bacteria, that usually they're monomorphic. It means that if we are talking about only one species of a bacterium, 
most of these organisms, they would look like uh, each other. But sometimes we see variation in the structure, especially when the bacterium is a rod shape. Some rods are smaller, some are larger. So um, if they're not uniform in size, we would call them pleomorphic. Pleo mean many and morphic mean shape. So they come in many uh, shapes. Overall, they would look like rods. There's no doubt about it. But uh, some rods would be smaller in size, some would be larger in size. And that variation could be a natural variation in a species, or it could be acquired uh, in, from the environment. That means that if the medium in which they are growing is not very supportive uh, nutritionally, then you would also see uh, the same bacterium grown in a very good growth medium would have all the, uh, the morphology the same, so it would be monomorphic, but grown in a poor medium would end up in a pleomorphism. In summary, there are three basic shapes of bacteria, and they are spherical, rod shaped, and curved. Similarly, archaea are also uh, classified into three structures, three shapes. Star, uh, they could be flat, rectangular, or could be triangular. If you look at the arrangements of these cells or relationship with each other, they may be single, they may be two, what we call diplococci or diplobacilli, or they may be chains, what we call streptococci or streptobacilli, or coxobacilli. 